There we go. What's up, Speaker? YouTube, Spotify, Podcast Addict. This is The Couch. I'm DJ Gonzo. Tonight, we got Alan Wayne, the prodigy. What's up, brother? What's goody, man? Thanks for having me. It's good everybody listening. I'm Alan Wayne, the prodigy. Now I'm staying shit. Hope everybody's enjoying this good Memorial Day themed in weekend, man. Absolutely. I didn't even realize it was a Memorial Day weekend. Right. Like, that's how things yeah. just have been. Like, I didn't even get it. I was like, oh, shit. I should have done something. Yeah, uh, all the holidays got canceled. I don't think we had an Easter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they have Easter. Hey, we better have some Fourth of July, though. There's going to be some pissed off people who ain't got no Fourth yeah. of July. Boy, we're going to set something on fire. Blow something right. up. <laughs> I, I keep telling everybody, instead of like the Boston Tea Party and stuff, it's going to be like face masks and stuff thrown out in the harbor and shit. Like, mm-hmm. I just don't keep people bundled up and, uh, tied down and losing their stuff regardless of anything and have something so emblematic of the country and stuff come come around, you know, 4th of July, Independence Day. People are going to act a fool. Yep. You know what? I could really see that happening, what you just said there. For real, for real. Right? Uh, and, and if, you know, all it takes is one, one uh, city or not even a city, one community to do that and they catch a wave like online or the news cover in one place and then you're going to have a... a a wildfire right i mean because you can just look back to uh 1992 la riots and stuff i'm from southern california you know like when mm-hmm. that popped off miami popped off so many other cities and everything popped off story it got wild down here you know yeah. i'm just a baby you know what i'm saying but i was living in the projects in uh, uh seven oaks and a bunch of shit uh got tore up and it was fucked up because we had just had a flood not that uh long ago before that and she was just getting built back up. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. Shit was polarizing times, man. Way over here in the Midwest. It was. And see, that's the thing. Uh, we, I was joking with somebody else the other day. Like, nowadays, a lot a lot of the, the younger generation, they just, I don't know. Maybe it's better of them. Because maybe we don't need that stuff to happen. Just It's in contrast to two generations ago. Even farther back, the 70s, watch riots, all that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, now we seem to be really rooted in PC-ness. Yeah, you know, we used to have to get out and do shit more often. You know what I'm saying? Now everybody can be righteous behind, you know, an Instagram post. Right. You know, it's all about that viral effect. They feel like they've done a good job. If they've got 100 views, they've saved the planet and shit. You know what I mean? So Right. All these different. Yeah, you ain't actually putting your feet down and putting the work in. That's actually came up in other conversations about the music industry from where it was like, you know, 20 years ago versus now because of social media and everything else. You're not putting that grind down. You ain't at Walmart selling your CDs, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, it's the tongue in cheek. That's very true. A lot of them will never uh, know, you know, like the take guts to get out there in person. You can be, uh, you know what I'm saying? You can be as cool as you want to behind that screen. But, you know, it's give and take with everything. You know, that internet is an equalizer because a lot of a lot of us who wouldn't have had opportunities, you know what I'm saying, uh, got them now because, you know, it's kind of an equalizer. If you can get in there and you got something, you catch that right pocket, you can go, you know. But, uh, it was back, you could, and that's how it was the same thing that used to happen, but it happened out the trunk, though, which was yeah. still a harder grind to do, you know what I mean? So, but yeah, yeah. it's uh, well, it reflects the difference, it reflects the difference in hip hop, anyways. Um, like that mean that has been going around, like my music was about fucking selling drugs and stuff, yours is about doing them, doing drugs. The yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, I know that's one of the weirdest things to me too. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's one thing to talk about being fucked up, you know, but to basically like junkies put your hands in the air. You know what I'm saying? Right. They don't, they don't realize that's what they sound like, and you could tell a lot of them don't even do those drugs like that because they did those drugs like that. They'd be in a whole other predicament. You know what I'm saying? And, right. Uh, so, and, and a lot of them do, do get there. You know what I'm saying? And rest in peace to some of them who didn't make it to those places to get that help either. Cause that shit that shit ain't cute when uh you know what I'm saying we got that chemical dependency. 
Right. Absolutely. No, I, I totally agree. You know, I almost got four years, you know. Like, so I, I totally, I can ride with that. I get that. So we, we kind of jumped in some things like this is focused back around you. Like yeah. I said, you're kind of like a blank slate for me, bro. Like for my, my knowledge of you and stuff, because like we just started talking not too long ago. Um, how did you get into to music? Let's do some of the basic questions here. How did you get into this? Hey, well, you know what I'm saying? Uh, keep it a buck, man. Started when I was a, a, a little bitty dude. I always had everything around me. You know, you name a record. My mom had stacks of everything. Then uh, my actually, I can remember being five years old and the first record I bought or picked out was Michael Jackson's Bad, you know what I'm saying? And I had that motherfucker on. I still got it. I still got it and uh, it'll still play too. Oh, but that's uh, what... yeah, for real, no real shit. Um, so yeah, I thought, and then, then like every Christmas it was a keyboard around and shit like that. So for real, my first love was the piano. By the time I was in middle school, I was good enough to, uh, I'll put it like this, the choir direct piano player, she died like the morning of our graduation. It was fucking crazy. And the choir teacher called and asked me if I could play for the graduation. I never had a lesson or nothing like that. She just heard me fucking around in the classroom. I said, all right. I don't remember what I played, but I know I played my ass off, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and, and, right. you know, so, uh, but that's where it started. That's where a lot of the harmonics and shit come from, the music, you know, from learning the keys. But as far as actually rapping, you know, uh, my brother came during those Michael Jackson airs from Houston to stay with us for a little bit. He was on a whole nother tip. He came with a, like I said, I'm about four years old, if I'm not mistaken, five at the oldest and he had a, a Run DMC album. You know what I'm saying? It was a, I don't know the name of the album. I'm going to act like I do, but it was a blue album cover. I know it's whatever the one with the blue album cover with him on there. And I heard that record drop, and it was something like, it was a sound like I had never ever heard before. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? And it kind of was something that stuck with me since. And by fast forward to middle school, I had already been listening to everything that's on the radio, you know, and uh, somebody moved on the block homie Fred, he came up with a bunch of shit from Memphis, like a lot of the old underground triple six mafia shit and a whole yeah. bunch of other stuff. And he actually rapped. He was the first person of my age bracket who I seen with notebooks and shit like that. So I was kind of over there like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like kind of in awe with him. And he was doing that chopper shit that I was kind of into at the time, Bone Thugs and Harmony and, you know, Nuthouse. You know, this is way before Tech Nine that you guys know now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I had heard a, lot of the, a whole lot of that shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it was amazing type of shit. And he was into the same kind of thing. So I found that I could do it. Once I found that I could do it, I just never stopped doing it. It got to the point that uh, I was hanging out uh, on Mexican pond on the west side. It was like, uh, and back then it was still pretty divided. We wasn't, black folks really wasn't supposed to be over there. You know what I'm saying? But uh I was good. I had a pass. I was over there like all the time. You know what I'm saying? I was a black Mexican, you know, so <laughs> there was a bunch of, of hip hop heads over there into a, a lot of underground. Uh, it's a big underground Bay Area scene in Kansas City, period. So I was already hip to that. But then I got over there and they on that Cypress Hill and a bunch of other shit. You know what I'm saying? Some real deep into the, some West Coast shit. And uh, so anyway, they were a big freestylers and I was over there eating shit up like for a little while. You know what I'm saying? I was like, West Side Legend, like, yo, black dude Allen's on, over here. We're going to rap and shit. Well, anyway, it was uh, a white guy, David Kinch. He actually lived over there. And, you know, we kind of naturally bonded, I think, because we both were kind of out of bounds. You know what I'm saying? This right. was a little Mexican over there. He's the white boy who's down. I'm the black dude who's down. You know what I'm saying? So we kind of always had understood you know what I'm saying? Silent. He's one of the most quiet, most talk people I had ever met, but we kind of had a silent mutual respect because of that. You know what I'm saying? Well, anyway, one day, I must have been, I might have been a freshman in high school. I want to say I was still in middle school. Might have been a, a freshman in high school. But we were over there powwowing on the west side. Fucked up, man. You know what I'm saying? And we used freestyling. I will never forget, we was on the couch. He's like, man, you really got something, dog. And, uh, we can do something with this. You know, we about the same age. He's a little bit older than me. We 
fucked up. So I'm just like, yeah, I'm just feeling the drunk conversation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, nah, man, I got like fifty thousand dollars, man, like stacked, and it's growing, man. We can really do something now. This conversation happened. That um, that was the first time it happened. Then it happened again. You know, a couple of other random times throughout high school, just hanging out. And then well, I remember one it was my senior year. This shit had started. Now by this time in high school, me and another guy, um, I think Brandon Phillips, goes by Archbishop. At this point in time, we were like in high school, known as like the rapper dude. You know what I'm saying? Our names yeah. are both starting to kind of even pour outside of the school. So, so you know, I kind of got that uh, school bug because it was a talent show. My teacher made me do it because she used to let me skip into her class with my drama teacher. You know, and I just skipped like every fucking class. I'd be in her classroom all day almost. You know what I'm saying? She was like, all right, we got this thing coming up. Trade off is you and a couple of the guys who used to skip with me pretty thorough too. Right. Like, y'all gonna shit that y'all let y'all sit back here in the back of my classroom, do y'all gonna do it on stage. You know what I'm saying? We said, fuck it, we'll do it. You know what I'm saying? And uh we went up there and we did it and I and that ovation that I got, like it's never fucking left me. You know what I mean? Right. So uh so at this point, all that shit, I'm kind of mixing up some time frames. But anyway, fast forward to this time, my my uh senior year in high school, similar situation. This time I bring it to Dave, like, man, all that shit you've been talking these years, you serious? Like, yeah, I'm dead serious. Like, we don't know shit about it, but I'm serious. So I'm like, oh, I know somebody who knows somebody, you know. So next thing you know, I recorded a single called uh, Sunday Afternoon. And this was about during those Napster times and shit, you know what I'm saying, where that uh, burning CD staying up for hours and hours to make one disc was brand new. Well, right. I had a, par- a partner, Jason, who was like the kingpin in school. He was like, I think he bought a car with this money and everything. Like he was selling those mixed CDs in school with everybody he had them. Like he had orders galore. He could turn people down. He was he was like like better than adult money. Well, anyway, right. he started putting my song on there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then next thing you know, people's personal mixes they were asking for and shit. So, you know, I kind of got a taste of it in high school. Well, uh, during that time, Tech is recording actually. This is kind of a this will segue into some later questions I know will come up. Yeah. Um, Tech is record uh, recording Angelic, and you know me and Tech's roots are real deep. You know what I'm saying? So he yeah. had popped up like, "Yo, man, shit's about to change for me." He was telling me I didn't know this is like he was telling me about Travis. I didn't know who Travis was, but he was basically talking about him. Like, "Yeah, man, we finishing up my first album. We down at West End Studio." You know, so. He invited me down in there. I actually, and he was waiting, he had a song to open verse and everything. And I actually recorded a verse for that. It ended up being a song, uh, This Life, it ended up being a road dog song. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't stand a chance anyway. You know what I'm saying? I was fish out of water for real. Like, I right, right. But, it, but, it, but it gave me a boost of confidence that, you know what I'm saying, came from nowhere. You know, and, uh, a taste and of what, you know, what you wanted. You know what I mean? Like a little extra taste and shit. Right. Yeah, and he and you know he dapped me up with a it's a West End studio, it's where I record at right now. You know what I'm saying? So he kind of put me, uh, he introduced me to that atmosphere. You know what I mean? So then now me and Dave got somewhere to record at, record at. You know, so uh, we after high school, I put out my um, I'm recording towards the end of my after we put that shit out in high school. I'm recording during my high school year. Afterwards that summer. I'm recording all summer. I put it up like this. My senior year, I graduated. By the time that the uh, school year had started back up and you got new seniors or our juniors, I had a, I had new I had music, you know what I'm saying? So my first disc right. dropped the year after my high school year. And this one particular song on there, Kansas City niggas like did really good in certain pockets of the town. So uh so yeah, man, um because of that song. And this was during a time frame where we used to have to shop rec. We weren't, we weren't, we put out a CD just to put something out because we were recording. But the ultimate goal is a record deal at this back in those days. So right. we we're shopping a demo for real. You know what I'm saying? I got an album out on the streets, but we shopping a demo, picking up a little steam, 
through a couple of other connections. I started working in St. Louis a lot. So we got shows. We're getting pretty close to home, but often enough. And uh, we get invited out to uh, this thing in Chicago. There's some kind of some big names in Chicago, some A&R types that we don't know. And uh, it didn't seem like much came from it. But by the time we got home from there, there was another call similar conference, but this one is in New York. During this time, we're working on some, what I feel like at the time was like some out-the-box music. You know what I'm saying? By this time, um, I'm recording with Robert Rebeck, who I record with now. Well, again, another thing, Nine, now that I think about Nine, I knew Nine introduced me to that, but I didn't realize anybody back over there, now they were recording the Absolute Power album and shit, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I fall into that lab and the album that we're recording on, they invite us out to this conference in New York. And it's this guy, um, KK Rosman, who was, uh, at the time, he was like a, a big, big A&R, like for a lot of the labels. He was responsible for a lot of the, uh, that neo soul movement that happened and shit, you know what I'm saying? And when we were up there, he, uh, he seemed to take a liking to my music. This is New York City, so this was the second time I had been there. I had been there once for what we thought was uh, Puff Daddy had put out an all call because he had started his bad boy all the way independent. Somehow Dave got that call. We flew out to New York that night. The most intimidating shit I ever seen in New York was like a fucking monster. You know what I'm saying? But we got down there, and it's just, man, and... I actually made the commercial for it and everything. The original making the band commercial, they got like a quick snippet of me rapping on it. We didn't know this was a, a reality show type of contest. We didn't know it was a reality oh, show type of contest until after I went up there and I rapped and they pulled me to the side and then they had me fill out this form. And they said, what's your name? What's your stage name? What's your age? What's your stage age? You know what I'm saying? For people who think that Hollywood shit is not, they, they literally have stage name on the fucking application. And then uh, they set me down and basically gave us the rundown. Like, this is a reality show that we're starting up. You might get picked. We automatically knew, like, no, nah, that ain't for us. You know what I'm saying? Right. But anyway, now this second time in New York, we've been invited to this conference with this cake I can do. By this time, I feel like, you know, I'm confident. I'm walking around New York City like it's mine and shit. You know, I know what to say. How old were you at this time? How old were you then? Um, by the second trip, the first trip was right out of high school. Um, I had just finished that album. So the first time, I was about 19. This time around, I'd say 22 at the oldest, maybe 23. We're back in New York City at this point. And so you have more confidence and stuff by then. Because 19 yeah. out of high school hit New York. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, for real. Like, it was the Akram still I was. I, can, I have flashbacks sometimes of that first cab ride from the airport to the hotel like it was it's a whole nother place i see why nobody drives there because you shouldn't drive there with those people you know what i'm saying it's uh, not, it's fucked up <laughs> but uh right. yeah you gotta excuse me i'm blazed but uh so yeah the conference seems to go well so i felt like but nothing seemed to come from it well fast fast forward a few weeks Later, I have this show in Manhattan, Kansas. If you're a sports fan, you might be familiar with K-State, the Wildcats. That's where they play ball at, is down there. Okay. So in that town, they had this place, Aggieville, which is kind of like the college kicking spot. And we had went down there and did a show. It was the, At that point in time, it was the craziest show I had ever done. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't know what to expect going down there. That shit was dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, we could set twice. You know what I'm saying? Got encore real time. You know? And uh, at this particular show, this is all going to be relevant. Dave, the, the money behind everything, and who still, whenever that big check comes, I'm still going to break off properly. Right. Um, he's very, like I said, stoic as a motherfucker. Like, Stored to the point of introverted to the max, like you know what I'm saying, like not a weirdo or nothing like that. But I don't know if he'd ever even pinched a female before, you know what I'm saying, like that, you know, really. And he's a little yeah. older, you know what I'm saying. It's just if he if he would have, we wouldn't have known. He was just the most quiet kept my fucking well, anyway. Right. 
he uh he had a regular uh day gig too kind of and some girl he worked with her brother would went to school down there so she was like uh he invited her you know what i'm saying so my this show is big bananas and at the end of it before we get on court i stopped the show and like let everybody know that this wouldn't be here none of this would be happening if it wasn't for dave kent you know what i'm saying i point him out big him up real big you know and uh people go wow and i never forget that chemistry he had with that girl you know what i'm saying like and uh so after that about a few days go by that night was big they had the first time i had ever played anything of mine on the radio was that same night here at home and i missed it because i was on that show i was like oh man i feel like i'd have made it like i can just feel the energy it all seemed like little shit right but it just felt right. right and then i get the call i get the call from kk and it's like at one o'clock Kansas City time. So that's like two o'clock in the morning in New York. He called yeah. me playing my shit in the background. And he's like, uh, yeah, man, we I think we might have something here, bro, but I need you to send me three more. Do you got three more? Um, so I don't, right? But right. I'm not worried about it because I got Dave, we got we rolling. So I'm like, yeah, that's nothing. Just give me to the end of the week. So I didn't like tell him I'm gonna shoot him or nothing last night. So I guess in hindsight. I did tell him I could get up to him. You know what I'm saying? So right. calling, I called Dave, like, excited as shit, you know? And I'll never forget the tone of Dave's voice. He was just like, yeah, okay, well, we, we'll talk about it tomorrow and shit. And then, like, days went by, days went by, weeks went by, weeks went by, and I just couldn't get him. You know what I'm saying? And uh, to the point that KK called me a couple times, I, like, avoided the call a little bit. I've given them my whole everything that I've gotten new so far. So out of desperation, I uh, was like, fuck, man. Well, I know he was loving this one particular song, this Nahboy song, but it's other shit that maybe he just didn't pay attention to because that was so high up on the list. So I tried to rearrange some shit and resend him something that I thought he might not have heard. That shit didn't work. You know what I'm saying? That was like the last time I had spoke with him for years until actually kind of here recently. And I still don't, uh, I was surprised he remember who I was for real. But, uh, uh, so yeah, it ended up, long story short, all that orchestrated music money that we have going and jump ship. And, you know, now him and her are still like, they're happily ever after. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, and in hindsight, and even then, like outwardly, I never expressed any kind of frustration. It broke me, like it sent me through the deepest depression, like like I thought it was over and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But uh um, you know, this journey that probably was that was that's what this was for for him, you know what I'm saying? Had right. not if he wouldn't be they got kids and shit now, you know, so if it wasn't for that, he wouldn't even have that. That's his whole family. You know what I'm saying? That's where the journey stopped for him. You know, that's what it was for for him. You know, so in hindsight, this was, was one of the best parts of the whole story. But, you know, I was kind of like the sacrifice for that. Right. So, you know, by that time, like, I wasn't really, I didn't know what to do. I just kind of fell back, just drinking heavy, like, kind of like, kind of like, fuck it, you know? And, uh, but then, like, I got a random call from somebody who gave me some good advice, you know what I'm saying? And long story short, that good advice ended up turning into a couple other conversations with somebody. And next thing I know, I'm standing, sitting in front of a $20,000 advance to work an album. You know, I'm not going to name drop on them because nothing ever continued. But, yeah. oh, man. So, but what came from that was an album, Bond Street Symphony, a dope-ass album. So I recorded that, and at this time, there's no Dave. And I never saw any money that Dave was spending, you know what I'm saying? Because it was just like a never-ending pot. Like, it was crazy. And I would always be like, are you sure we got this? He would always be like, man, there's plenty more of that, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't, I stayed in my lane. It was comfortable. Right. So I didn't know what to expect when I was time for him to pay for the studio time. And I'm like, I'm not in pocket with a bunch of producers or nothing like I am now necessarily. You know, people want to try to jump on the project to be a part of it. So I'm buying production, 
um, I'm paying for the artwork, you know what I'm saying? Everything. So, and I'm living off of some of that money. I'm thinking that $20,000 is going to be something, but that was enough to get the album done. You know what I'm saying? Right. By the time this album was done, we were supposed to have a setting, a second sit down. It was supposed to be understood that that was what that was for. You know what I'm saying? Then we were going to go from there after they seen if they were like the project. They seemed to love the project, you know? So they're the one set up the, the second meet. But that was during the time where you can time stamp it for this. The big crash of the 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 last time the the market crash it was a real estate it was something where well, the money got real Wait. fucked up. There you yeah, go. And, yeah, yeah, and you got it, exactly. It was always, as a matter of fact, and uh, I think they were taking big losses in that. So I don't think I just think they kind of they didn't have it. What they had right. before, I was right timing. So right now, so what I got basically is an album with no nothing to push it with. Not not that machine that was sending it out everywhere. I just right. got a dope ass album. I got to try to hand out. You know what I'm saying? So uh, in a know, situation you're not even prepared for because, like you said, Dave took care of it all. Hell yeah, you know what I'm saying? So then again, so so then here we are again, like fuck. Like I feel like the balloon got popped twice, and by this time, I not I don't got so used to the. I didn't realize how how bad my depression had really have been. You know what I'm saying? At this right. point, I have virtually given up on everything. You know, but then funny shit happens. You know, I'm just riding down the the highway, and uh, right here. I feel like I'm getting that's all good. I feel like I'm getting trailed and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, who's this crazy motherfucker on my ass? You know what I'm saying? Coming down 435. I'm like, I didn't know if it was a problem. So motherfucker swoop on the side of me. It's this fool Ike in tech and roll down the window. It's like, man, just follow me. I don't even know where we headed to. So I just get to following these dudes. We pull up to uh, the the new chapmans. They have moved. And he's like, what's up, man? He's like, I need you. I got this song. It it, it, it it was an accident. He's like, uh, I've already did my part, and I sent it over to. I'm not gonna say we sent it to. He had sent it over to some cats uh, in Sacramento, and they sent it back. And they really didn't. They didn't have the story to match. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. and he didn't want to scrap the song. And he just asked me, "Do you think I have something for it?" So. I went. I had a Lincoln LS at that time. I had a cheap ass half pint of vodka. I was still drinking at that time. So I went out there, knocked that back, and that's the quickest 16 bars I ever <laughs> wrote in my life. I don't think I, I didn't write it. You know what I'm saying? I don't do much pen and paper, but I came up with it. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, I come up on the John, like I got two, two avenues I can go. I can go at route A or route B for this song. I told him about the concept and everything. He's like, man, go A. So John, my boy John Paul, is responsible for the content because I could have went a whole different, another direction. And uh, yeah, I went in there, laid that shit down, and uh, that when that dropped, you know, it uh, it did something for me. It's inside, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause it was one of the, it was a feature song. It was one of the only songs that had a feature with, with just him. It wasn't him and Calico and somebody, him and a bunch of folks. It was just like, it was like renegade style. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't, I didn't look at it like that at the time, but that was kind of like the fan response. You know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, I don't have product out for real. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so people love the song and love the verse, but they have no idea who I am. They think right. I'm a, I'm from, they, they they don't even realize I'm from Kansas City. They think I'm from Tacoma, Washington, because there's a similar school and city and everything down there, you know. Oh no uh, shit. Yeah, man. So uh, so that that was a good boost of confidence and shit like that. But then, like, I didn't. I was so far gone. Like, I was drinking bad, dude, and just like wasn't really taking care of shit like I was supposed to. Trying to throw these little spotty shows here and there, they all would bust. You know what I'm saying? I'd have a couple of little glimpses of promising things, and then but I wasn't on my dean. But then, poof, uh, you know, uh, sometime within that realm of craziness, me and Non linked up and started, you know, kind of 
reconnected again. And this about this time, he was started working on those collab ideas. This was around the time for the first Collabo album. And I actually did something for that that they ended up using later. Um, and that was dope. Then we did something for that, uh, that, um, he did something for, uh, DJ Who Kid. Okay. It was like some kind of shit. And I did something for that with him, but then Who Kid leaked the song that I was on. So he said he's still going to release that. I'm not sure what's going to happen with that, but that was something that was real big. And then like that kind of bled over into to the second Collabo album where they had the loud feature on there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that all kind of happened in a in a spectrum that was kind of close together. You know what I'm saying? Because they were yeah. like fans was moving. You know, so. Um, but after that, you know, like life had took a a big downward spiral. So I had like fell all the way back. I ended up realizing like shit was getting too heavy for me. So I left town for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like I put everything away. Um, shit came back, left again. You know what I'm saying? But then yeah. uh. Finally came back like I right, I didn't know what I was gonna do. I knew I was gonna always make music, you know what I'm saying? Like right. and 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 I respect I started so young that I was still young and I knew all these things and shit. But at this point in time, I'm just like I'm gonna still make music because that's just what I do. I don't go to the movies a lot, I don't go right. bowling and shit, you know what I'm saying? So right. I'm know I'm gonna record some music. And I just put something on the on the internet, it was a, a song, um, We Out Here. No, zero promotion. I don't even remember who I released that through. So until I re-release it, I don't, I'm not getting any of the money. <laughs> and I, I will, I'll find out who distributed that, but I'm sure I'm getting ripped for that. But uh, the few people who heard it, like really, really, really loved it. And like, that was enough for me to keep recording. And uh, so when I, I started like, you know, I'm not going to call it um, knocking the, the rust off. It was just I was getting back into a groove. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm back in a, a studio that I hadn't recorded in since I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? I'm back at the West End studio, but I'm still with Rob. You know, so I'm just kind of like, you know, I was taking in the experience more than the recording of the music career. So it was more like that. Just those songs that I was doing earlier, they're still dope enough that I could use right now. But, you know, they kind of just mean something different to me. So anyway, we're getting into a groove and I'm like, okay, me and my, my producer D'Lo, you know, we're getting to know one another, you know, taste. And we hit this groove, this pocket where, where things aren't sounding the same, but it's sounding like a sound. I'm like, all right, this is good enough to let people hear this. So right. send me to the other uh, single, I didn't have any intentions for this, but I'm going to put this out. I'm at least going to, you know, tip to go on Instagram a little bit more often than I do and say something about it because, you know, I do want people to hear this, but I still wasn't going to push it. I wasn't going to do anything. I'm not thinking about videos. There's not a single for it, for real. It's just like one long song is what it feels like to me. When I put that out, I don't know where the stars were lined up or how it happened. But all of a sudden, like my Instagram following grew, like it went from like a few hundred to a couple thousand to about four thousand. Then I was at six. I was stuck in the sixes. Now I'm like eight point four or some shit bounces up and down by a couple of hundred because of the spammers and shit. Right. But and it was because of that album, you know, and it was off the strength of the music. I didn't have any visual aid or anything. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and to tell you the truth. It was because of that, seeing that happen to me and you are talking right now. Because after I seen that doing that song, I'm like, all right, I'm going to have to uh, get behind this thing. And, you know, everything started coming full circle by the time, you know, I'm working this album and dropping singles in between and videos here and there. And, you know, uh, it's catching enough wind that it's catching wind out of town. Uh, I end up getting booked in. Tacoma, Washington. Well, when I get to Tacoma, Washington, you know, that song, it was an accident. It's big in Tacoma because everybody thinks that that guy who was me is a guy from Tacoma because I say a line in there. I say, uh, so I'm leaving Lincoln High School off Woodland, headed to the hood to hang out with the hood. That's really the high school I went to, all those streets that it's on. Well, anyway, 
in a parallel universe in um uh, in a coma they got a lincoln hospital off of woodland down the street from a from the most solid projects that's in tacoma called hilltop and in my song i say because they're from hilltop where there's pill pop there's a hilltop village that's one of the most anonymous projects in Kansas City. You know, it's like it was perfect. So when I got there, you know what I'm saying? I told them who I was. They were like, oh shit, it's him. And then after I told them the story, it wasn't a letdown. It was like, damn, and you still came. Like it was it, it made it even the love was even bigger. And you know, right. and, and uh and to this day, like I got I got plenty of work down there like i can go washington period you know if i go do a show in washington i gotta spend some time in washington because i got and it's all because of those old seeds were planted you know what i'm saying like sure. and even those little you know that's why i always tell people like uh who ask me like how'd you get where you are now because things seem to be moving I'm like i just kept on doing what i was supposed to do like and uh a lot of times we overthink this thing like this shit has its own energy that burst um kod had plans of its own you know what i'm saying right. i had to get out the my own way and sit back and relax and let it take me where it was supposed to go and, the, and that's how this shit is working here now you know what i'm saying so now i got this this new album real like it's in, getting anticipated in pockets i'm not it's not i don't want to bootsy it up like i'm done made it or anything like that but it's little pieces of the whole globe from my hometown to a good amount of people out west to a good pocket of people in the southeast district of a lot of people in canada to a lot of people in europe you know to a big group of people in france you know so like i got those seeds planted you know right we can keep watering them and let them grow you know so uh it's been a bumpy one man but we here now i can tell mm -hmm. that this is something's about to it's not about to happen. It's happening. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How do we focus it? You know, people are so focused on a final destination. They don't realize it's all about that journey. You know what I'm saying? It is that journey. And it's, it's good that you're able to sit back and look at where you went, how things worked out. They stopped, started, stopped, started. And to me, it seems like now you're more fit, more set to where things are going to work out. To saying if some of those good breaks that turned bad, if they hadn't turned bad and stuff, maybe it wouldn't have been the right time for everything to work. But you kept uh, it going and kept I going. I made it. I would have died. I would have been a dead man without, without those with, with with those shut doors in my face. I still uh, had to sign about two or three do not resuscitate forms. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I got blue lighted at the hospital. When they turn on blue lights, that means all hands on deck. He's out of here. You know what I'm right. saying? But we we right here though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. Yeah, and and so I and I, and that was all mostly self-inflicted wounds, partying hard like we was already on. Now imagine if I would have had it like that to really be there. You know what I'm saying? Hey. I was too young. I jumped in it like dumb young with no guidance. You know, my my guidance was a guy who was, you know, in my same generation. You know, he's only a couple hey. of years my senior. You know what I'm saying? We're the same age. And, I, and he was big homie in the situation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, a bunch of kids out there uh, playing the big leagues. But it, that's what it takes, though. You know? And we see that now, especially in some of the more mainstream uh, hip-hop and stuff. A lot of these young cats now. And we refer to back, a lot of them have died off the drugs and shit like that. You know what I mean? But these young kids, without that guidance, without people really in their corner, you at least had somebody in your corner that was solid in your corner through almost all of it you know what i mean like i think these kids are coming up with these executives the money and they're pushing them to keep doing what they're doing because that's what's selling you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah yeah they don't give a fuck about them <laughs> you know what i'm saying because it's a billion of them out there you know like they just scrolling through tiktok seeing who's got the most views and, right oh let's get them in here so yeah I ain't getting on no TikTok. I don't do TikTok. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I don't. I, and I should. You know, I, I, probably, I probably need to. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know nothing about it, man. Like, yeah, I don't know enough either. Like, I have to agree. Like, even with Instagram, man, I, like, some things I don't understand so much. So I tell the lady today, like, hey, they're right. Like, Facebook, Facebook is the old man's app or the old people app. Like, Instagram, like, because also I can't understand it. And I know ins and outs of Facebook. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, damn, I done hit that age now. 
<laughs> but TikTok, I just can't see myself over there. Like my daughter, she's on it, right? She does a little modeling, whatever, and stuff. Man, if I had her views and followers and stuff on YouTube or just on anything else, other platform, man, I, I'd be I'd be feeling it really good then. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, man, it, it, the young generation, man, it's just something about them. Period. They they got it's where it's at, man. I I got a uh, a young partner, uh, little Tyrell, young young cat from around here, and I'm talking about. He's a, he's a he's a uh, young dude who's in my video with me, who's with me most okay. of the time. Not my not my guy, guy baby, but uh uh my my little co-star in the video. Yeah. Anything that he drops, I'm talking about. He could put out a a two minute clip of him rapping on the porch. You know what I'm saying? And it's like seventeen point five thousand views. You know what I'm saying? Like shit's crazy. You know, it's that that's what they do. Like that's really their domain. The little in your windows and things that we're trying to figure out algorithmically and shit. That's just like in their fucking DNA. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? Absolutely. I'm not knocking on the younger generation because they're, they're built for it. They're made for it. You know what I mean? I, and it also fits their attention levels. Two minutes of that is going to get way more views than us uh, sitting here for 40 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. You, the, the game will show you that. You know, an uh, album is not... People don't even put out albums no more. People think I'm crazy for putting out an album instead of dropping an EP, an EP, and an EP, and calling it a collection, you know, because that's the route to go, or just do a bunch of singles. So we are going to, I'm going to put out an album. We're going to do it a little bit uh, in, a, in a unique fashion, but we're going to put out this whole album. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, but people don't put out albums no more. You remember yeah. a song used to be, you know, usually three verses, three hooks. Sometimes you have that fourth guy on there, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A rap song. The radio cut might be three minutes and 45 seconds, but that rap song was usually 450. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now you got Rap songs are two two minutes and twenty five seconds. I got a couple songs on that demonstration because, like I said, I wasn't planning on that. I wasn't even gonna call the EP would have kind of glorified it. It was just a collection of what was what I had going on. I didn't even call it anything. It was just the demonstration. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And some of those songs, I'm like, let's get to the point because that was later. You know what I'm saying? But you know why songs are now going towards like that more that two minute forty second, you know, time period right there. This is my theory. And I was a DJ at strip clubs before because you know how many songs you cut at like that 230, 240 mark, right? So if you mm -hmm. put a whole song out, 230, 240, you're going to get that whole song played while she's out there. You know what I mean? Versus half of it getting cut off or maybe the, the features getting cut off. You know what I mean? That's just my yeah. theory. No, I believe that. I believe that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of uh, the strip club is a great market to test music out period so i think a lot of the uh i bet you a lot of little things like that in standards they don't realize trickle from places like that and a lot of other similar you know what i'm saying like little things like that are probably more common than we know you know what i'm right. saying like uh shit i think uh that's how her t pain talk about it. that's why he started making a bunch of stripper songs because he was trying to break his albums he'd go test them out in the strip club but he said fuck it he was there <laughs> you know what i'm saying so capitalized off of that right maybe you find that niche to make that money you know yeah, but man. i like the fact i like the fact that you're still doing an album now it could be because i'm an old cat but i like an album i like an album to fucking speak to me you know what i mean i want to be able to listen to that whole damn thing you know and be able to feel it yeah. it tells a story you know right that's that's what i like myself i put it out i'm putting out an album because you know you don't hear people and this is young and old you know, people, the the artists, we're the ones who are so, we're, we're aware that people got short attention span. You know what I'm right. saying? So we're trying to think outside of that box. We're trying to be, you know, psychological about it. Plus, that's the way the industry thinks, too, when we do what they do in, our, our, in a smaller scale. But what you hear is this kind of conversation. Man, songs are so short, and the people don't put out albums no more. That's a, that's a complaint. That's a void. You know what I'm saying? So I... If people are saying, "Man, albums are way too long these days," and then I'd be shooting for something short. But the polar, the the common denominator is these micro albums and these micro songs. So, you know, you gonna get you gonna get a, a record, some records on this bitch. You know what I'm saying? So, right, yeah. like that collection of tech songs with um, easier for you and everything. Did the whole video mini series on it with uh, Chris and everybody? Like, mm -hmm. you mean something like that kind of? 
and like these mini EPs and stuff like that, and they kind of get collections and shit. Is, am yeah. I right? I'm kind of wrong. Right, yeah, no, nah, and, and you know, that was dope. Like, you gotta get creative, you know. I really liked it. With it, you know what I'm saying? If you're gonna, if you're gonna play the game, you still wanna try to stick out to the best of your ability, you know what I'm saying? And now it's almost, it's almost, unless you're that artist who's already, you gotta be almost at least a, a tech nine type of, I know he's on top of the independent chart, but you kinda already gotta have that cult following Right. To be able to even release something without a visual anymore. It's almost like you got to have the video now. Right. Not because people attention span is so short, you know what I'm saying? Like you got you lucky to catch them with the visual. Right. Let alone just the song, you know what I mean? And that's what and that was the thing about that's why I was so tripping off of the success of the last little project, because like I said, the out the, the videos that came for that to, to support that. Or after the fact, you know right. what I'm saying? That eyes closed on the songs I sent you. That was one of the first like solid videos to have an impact, and that really pushed the demonstration albums more. But that song is going to be on this. That I'm putting out now wasn't even on there. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, you gotta gotta have them. I, that's kind of the mindset I'm going to to this with. You know, I'm trying to trying to max out. That's a lot of that's a lot of recording, but we gotta do what we gotta do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, most definitely is. Um, so let's let's talk some of your music that you got right now that's out, and the one we talked about earlier, I I really that caught my attention. I, I can't wait for it to come out. Squeeze. Yeah, the squeeze, man. It's me, and uh, there's not very many features on the album, but that particular song, it's another fellow chopper on there. Midnight. He's got a good following around town. I wasn't even gonna say who was on there, but people are gonna love to hear that, um, you know, here in KC. And you, 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 you like it and love it. And like I said, it's, that's just a little, a little taste. It's, it's that's a motherfucker right there. I would have started the album off with that probably if it wasn't for some of this new life I just got during this quarantine. Right, right. And we're talking a little bit about the quarantine and like, it's kind of beneficial in some ways, right? Yeah, man. Um, it gave me a lot of time to uh connect with what you know what i'm saying with the people like if i'm not mistaken when i you know what i'm saying that's how me and you even you know what i'm yeah. saying yeah like, absolutely. Uh, yeah if, uh, that probably wouldn't happen that way uh it might have you know what i'm saying but you never know you know and right. like uh there's a lot of i've got to really engage with the with the you know what I'm saying my fan base is growing but it's small enough to where I can, I'm reach very, I'm very reachable. You know what I'm saying? Like in, in comparison to a lot of people, so it gave me. I'm already reachable, and plus I had nothing but time on my hands there for a good minute. So I was like, I was just there with them. You know what I'm saying? We chopping up about shit that has nothing to do with my music or anything. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and it made all the difference because word of mouth still counts, and for every person I talk. They talked to somebody else about what we talked about, and I can see the growth, and you know what I'm saying, and the interest is gaining. Like I got one, I got feature work to do tomorrow, and then I got another one of these to film tomorrow for a show on Thursday. You know what I'm saying, like, and it's all I got quarantine love, man, for real. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's kind of something I've been noticing, and, and I think I saw you use this word earlier too, synchronicity, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over the last few days, because I was talking to a, a collaborator of mine with the radio and a guy um, that I messed with, this dude Scribble, uh, pretty dope in the, in the underground. He's on this Force 5 Records right here. But he was telling me, like, right now, it's about the views and stuff, like with some of these bigger people and stuff, like, because they got time on their hands and stuff, like they want to get on bigger shows and everything else. He's like, you get a lot of homie love, right? So I started thinking about that and stuff. But with a few of these videos, with your response and other people's response came back, I started realizing, like, when people are hitting me up and talking to me about stuff, I wasn't used to that. You know what I mean? Where I actually started realizing, like, these motherfuckers are fans. Like, they're really taking their time out to really do this and get to know them and start pumping, you know, and start talking. Like you said, you, you are, you're not even talking about music or shows or anything, you know what I mean? Like right. we're building relationships. I'm sure mine's on a much smaller level, but like I told you, I'm kind of feeling that out. Yeah, yeah. Too, you know what I'm saying? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And it's uh and that shit counts, man. And, it's, and especially like when it's genuine. Like, don't get me wrong, we got a we got a dope uh we got a dope interview going, but for real, um we could have hit play or hit record when we were trying to make sure that the Skype thing was right. You know what I'm right. saying? Because it's just like that, you know, and your buddy's probably on or something. Like I just I just think it's something going on in the air period for a certain mass of people. You know what I'm saying? It's a bunch of change. I know that's for sure. I mean, you can just look out your window and you see everybody with those masks on. Hey, that's changed. That's a little different if right. I, I'm not mistaken. But you know, like a lot of people's lives are just taking massive turns. You know what I'm saying? And I just think it's a lot of, I think a lot of people are in good positions right now to like I said, if they can see those signs, pay attention to what's trying to get their attention and not be afraid to, you know, this is the time for people with any type of aspiration to go for something. Right. You know? And because all you got is, because you got the time and you got the, the ears, you know what I'm saying? You got the audience, you got the, the people, you know? Right. And that's in any, and that's in any endeavor, you know what I'm saying? It ain't got to be entertainment or, or anything like that. You just got a lot of time to even, even if you don't know what it is, what you want, that you want to do, you got a lot of time to sit and go within and figure that out. You know what I'm saying? Have a conversation with yourself about that. Right. Uh, whoever you call the most high, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's all it's, it's all about how you look at it. And to me, you know, I've got glum for like that long. You know what I'm saying? I'm like a gym rat, so I can't go work out. You know what I'm saying? And I had yeah. like have four shows like solid and, and and one of those was a Washington gig and I just know what that was going to spawn. That was going to be a shows and a half and then I have Portland waiting on me. Like I was going to leave and not know when I was going to come back home. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't wait to go. And I was like, fuck. That was like my, and you know, I feel like my name is going up. You know, I'm like, damn, why? You know what I'm saying? But that didn't last long. You know what I'm saying? I snapped out of that real quick and realized there's got to be a reason for this here. And right. uh, yeah, man, and as soon as I changed my my way of thinking about it, situation change. You know what I'm saying? So, no, very true. I mean, because with we don't know what's going to be happening. You know, what I mean, we don't know what underhanded things are going on. We don't know the whole who and what's about everything. So everything kind of looks like we don't know what's going to be tomorrow. So you might as well take your shot now. You might as well you know, push forward on it. If any time's right now, it's right now. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yep, nothing to be afraid of right now. <laughs> now, now it's time for us as individuals to, you know, kind of work on ourselves and uh, figure out what the hell we're doing. This court's yeah, changing. Am I video going in and out on you? Nah, man, it's actually playing pretty solid, man. We, it, we break it up. I got, I got it. No, you're great over there, too. I got it charging off of the, uh, the laptop, and every time it kind of moves, it pops up file transfer stuff. So I was like, I'm hoping it wasn't killing the video. Oh, no. Nah, As I was watching you see your response, too, I was like, is the dip going? <laughs> <laughs> so what else we got here, bro? What, um, you got anything up ahead other than what we talked about? Or nah, man, this, this really? Just gearing up for this album release, man. You know, uh, I got a release date. I have well, I've been teasing at it online. I haven't said it, but we're going to go ahead and, uh, because there's a lot more details about it to come, but we're going to release the full album on on July the 4th. You know, the original one came out on the 4th of July, the year before last. So we're going to drop this one on the same day. We're going to release it a little bit differently because it's a full album, but we're going to release it to the masses on July the 4th, man. And uh, we got a couple of videos in pocket for it already, uh, but shooting one supposed to start shooting i got a treatment for one in my uh inbox just a couple of days ago and we start to start production on that i think like next weekend too so um yeah man um it's gonna be a lot a whole lot coming here soon whenever whenever the world opens up like opens up opens up safe we're gonna uh we're gonna tear this motherfucker up you know what right. i'm saying for real um huh. i give a shout out to my partners up in uh got some some good folks up in um, Grand Rapids, they, uh, you know, that's a legalized state and they grow out there, you know what I'm saying? And some other folks, um, some uh, fans who have become friends, I mean, some 
cool ass dudes, man. And uh, yeah. they've invited me out there to shoot a video on their property and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So we might try to make that happen. You know, they got their own, they got their whole strand out there. You know what I'm saying? They're right. waxing. They got a lot going on, you know what I'm saying? So that's a good business for both of us. We go down there, have fun, and, you know, and indulge in some of Michigan's finest, see what they're working right. with down there. And you know. I was in Michigan uh, nine months ago, and uh, I was out in Sterling Heights. And uh, it, they didn't have, they had dispensaries, but they're just a medical, right? And even though it was legal, they didn't have no spots to go and get, get weed and shit, right? I'm a California boy originally. I get up there, I'm like, man, and we we're going to find a spot right now. And we found one on 8th and Shaner, um, on 8 Mile and Shaner and shit. Our only spot, man, I hunted that damn thing down. It's like you uh, paid, you pretty much were donating money to a veterans fund and stuff. And you would get uh, gifts. So if you had a $40 to give them, you got a $40 gift. You know what I mean? You got to okay. pick gifts and stuff. I was like, damn, how I found this, and then all these other people didn't know about it. I'm like, man, you guys are from here. You just definitely if you want some free Luke yeah. weed. It's it's not in them, man. Not in them the same, dog. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Put me anywhere on this planet, I bet you will find what we're looking for. You know what right. I'm saying? I got I got receipts for that. Yeah. Uh, right. Got a, got a whole bunch of Miami receipts for that. That's for that's for a. Uh, um, a different type of radio show, though. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. But, uh, hell yeah. What's up, bro? Hey, keep me linked up on stuff, bro. Like, sure. I'm body and I love the music, and uh, I want to see where you go with this, bro. And if I can help <laughs> you anyway, just let me know. Right on, man. I appreciate you reaching out again, man. Have fun, dog. Bye Absolutely, you. Too, bro. I appreciate you coming on, man. All right, right on, man. I'll tap in with you soon. Yes, sir. Have All right, we'll get the Music up on the radio for you too, bro. All right, right on, man. Appreciate that, man. Namaste and shit. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, folks. This is the couch. I'm DJ Gonzo. That was Alan Wynn, the prodigy. I hope you learned a lot here. Uh, go check his stuff out on YouTube and uh, pay attention to my uh, my pages because once the stuff comes out, you know, I'll be letting you guys know. Hit him up on Instagram. He's on Instagram and. Uh, I think that's it for the show tonight, guys. My last time, we'll go to bed. This is Couch. I'm DJ Gonzo. Buy the ticket, take the ride. Until next time, we, wait, what do we have here? We have, uh, and, oh, I got Nasty Ink coming on Wednesday, and we have on Saturday, Mr. Fuentes. So, got two different styles of hip hop. Check it in. Both people are really cool and up to a lot of shit. All right, guys, we're out.